Welcome to our one bedroom, one bathroom, Lincoln Park, Chicago apartment. We're gonna give you a tour of this $2,100 a month unit, tell you the pros and cons, and let you know if we think the rent is worth it or not. So make sure you hit that like button. Immediately when you walk into the apartment, you're greeted by this entryway slash front room slash foyer. This is a pretty rare thing to have for a one bedroom apartment in this part of Chicago, but we have really enjoyed this because there's a ton of storage and a little bit of space for us to sit down, put our shoes on, take them off, get Rowdy ready for a walk. And also when we bring him back inside, we wipe his little paws so he doesn't track mud and dirt everywhere. We also have space for a boot tray. That's helpful in the winter time because you know you track in that snow. There was a nail in this brick wall when we first moved in and we haven't done any other alterations. That's where we've hung our house keys for the duration of our stay in this apartment. There's a painting on the wall, a panel for an alarm, which we never activated. Inside one closet, we've got the water heater. In the other closet, we have our winter coats from the lightest windbreaker to the heaviest parka, extra shoes and little odds and ends and things like that. Above that is some storage, which is a common theme in this apartment. We have a ton of storage, probably more than we actually needed. But we'll talk more about that as we move along in the apartment tour. All right, so a little bit about the apartment building itself. It was constructed in the late 1800s. Actually, when it went up, Chicago was still a very, very young city. The architect who designed the building isn't really that noteworthy, though I did find one of his old ads in a vintage Chicago Tribune. There is a house in Gold Coast that the same architect designed, but I'm not gonna tell y'all which one. I'm saving that for my big podcast appearances, so keep it locked for that. There are five floors, about three units per floor, though I imagine when it was constructed, every floor was its own separate unit, just because back in those days, the neighborhood was even more wealthy than it is today, and those wealthy families were very, very leery about apartment living. So these units were probably very big with lots of Victorian trimming and built-ins and stuff like that. All that stuff has been demolished. The building itself kind of looks like Dr. Frankenstein put it together. Uh, but in any case, you could see some of those old details like the exposed brick. There are really no modern amenities to speak of. Yes, we do have laundry in the basement. We only have a couple of machines though, which is not enough for the whole building. There's a bike room and a mail room, which has been broken into quite a number of times with packages being stolen left, right, and center. Not the greatest thing, but it's kind of something you have to deal with living in a big city like Chicago. The way that we've solved this is we've tried to be at home for the bigger deliveries, but we also did get a separate mailbox, so we've been sending a lot of our big packages there. There is a rooftop, but not in the sense that you're thinking. They haven't converted it into anything that the residents can access. And because it is from the late 1800s, there is no elevator. It is a stairs only building, so you know not exactly accessible. We don't really mind, we're on the third floor, so it's that perfect balance, although we do have somebody above us that I think has a treadmill or a Peloton because I can hear when they exercise. So there's a few things about this apartment you should know before we start going room by room. Number one, there's a lot of square footage, especially when you compare it to other one bedrooms for similar prices around Lincoln Park. Number two, we got very, very high ceilings. I would say they're probably 12, 13 feet. A lot of storage space, probably a little bit too much for what we actually needed. But even though the apartment is big, it's got kind of an odd layout, which I attribute to this not originally being an apartment unit. Like I said, I would imagine that the whole third floor was its own private home. But that takes us first to the washroom, which I believe should be a sanctuary, your own private little spa. And I had visions of making that here with Himalayan rock salt, a couple of plants, noise machines, some nice pictures to put on the wall. We started with the tropical shower curtain and that's where it ended because the layout just didn't scream, spruce me up, make me a candidate for an architectural digest article. The sink sits pretty low, even by Narissa standards. The medicine cabinet is really outdated. It opens weirdly into three sections. So we didn't really use it that much. There is a huge closet, probably way too big for two people sharing a washroom. So we've been using it for extra things like paper towels, aluminum foil, parchment paper. There's a clothes hamper in there. But really when you have too much space, you start to fill it up and we'll see that more as we move through the apartment. Other than that, it's pretty basic. Toilet, shower, sink, everything that you need in a washroom. 
From a room that I don't really like so much to probably one of the best rooms in the entire apartment and definitely the best kitchen I've ever had in a Chicago apartment. I really have loved how it opens up to the rest of the unit. A double sink, we've got a lot of counter space, so we've got a dish rack on one side. On the other side, we've got a shelf with all Arati's treats because he is a bocce's buddy. That means he's an ambassador for the bocce's treats. He does have a discount code and everything and you can follow him at Rowdy Gusto. We have some pretty nice appliances, Frigidaire dishwasher, stove, and refrigerator. The refrigerator has been amazing. Really, really nice, big size. It's the older style with the freezer on top, which I don't really love. I love those double doors, but the dishwasher really didn't work too well, so we use that as a big dish rack. Then we have some smaller appliances like a Ninja Bullet, we have a toaster oven, we have other stuff like rice cooker, blender, and then lots of tools for the kitchen because we like to cook a lot. Now, we're gonna get more into this as we move along, but we definitely have to downsize a little bit of that stuff. Just like the rest of the unit, there is plenty of storage in the kitchen, so we've got lots of space for all of our dishware, our food, even tools and cleaning supplies. Everything in here fits very nicely, and I love that. So in here, we make our coffee. I like to make espresso protein shakes. Lately, we've been roasting entire chickens because it's very economical and we brine it first so it comes out super juicy. Uh, <laughs> if I had to say one negative thing about this kitchen is that there's no hood above the stove, so no proper ventilation. When I cook steak, it always sets off the smoke detector, so I have to open this window, put the box fan, and get that smoke out of here. Other than that, it's a phenomenal kitchen. Like I said, it opens up to the rest of the apartment. There's lots of storage space and a lot of counter space to prep foods. Longtime Gusto heads will notice that this apartment tour is pretty similar to the other apartment tour we did in this unit. We haven't brought in a lot of new stuff, but one new resident is Rowdy himself. And when we first brought him home, he would try to sneak his way into the kitchen, but we've since taught him to not enter this space. But what he does, he's kind of toes that line to see how far he can get. I'll try to put some B-roll of that. We have a couple of bar stools that we picked up brand new with the intention of using this as a dining area or maybe one person here while the other one was prepping our meal. But things didn't really work out that way and we kind of use these bar stools more for storage draping a coat over, stuff like that. And then the bar itself, we've got miscellaneous things like Rowdy's food, a humidifier, a couple of our plants. And so even though it didn't work out that way, I still love that this apartment has the bar because it just opens up the space a little bit more and it, it looks nice. Behind me is our conservatory. So we've got lots of plants, a monstera, a little palm that I've had for so long and then we get a little bit of natural light coming. These are our only windows besides the one in the bedroom, and they face east, which as those of you in the know will realize, that's not the greatest way to face if that's your only window facing direction, because basically you get some light at the beginning of the day, once it's above noon and later, it's a nightmare. You gotta have lights everywhere. That's okay. <laughs> the plants have somehow survived. I water them when I can. I did buy an elephant watering can because I thought it looked cool, but mainly what I do is I lug them one by one to the sink in the kitchen and give them that little bath so everything drains out and they get plenty of water that way. Like I said, they're doing okay. Other things that we have in this area, we have a couple of vacuums. We got a Hoover, which Rowdy hates. We also have the little Roomba, which Rowdy hates but we have his little soft crate as well in this area, which we originally purchased because it was gonna be a little portable crate to have in New York City. But when I ordered it, they messed up the shipping and so I didn't get it in New York, I got it here. So whatever, it doesn't matter. There's also some gym equipment, a couple of adjustable dumbbells and some stretchy things. We don't really use this space to work out anymore. We did during the pandemic. Now my gym is nearby, so I just go there to lift all my weights and stuff like that. And one more thing we have in here is our air filter, the blue air filter. We picked that up off Amazon. Being such an old unit that's over 120 years old, you can imagine it gets quite dusty, especially with that exposed brick that's not sealed in any way. There are spaces in between the floorboards and the walls, just general, not the best contractors working on this space. Not to dog anybody, but whoever renovated this unit, clearly they weren't the best. <laughs> So 
Uh, the unit itself gets quite dusty. We have to vacuum every day. We have an air filter running that cakes up lots of dust. Anyway, y'all don't want to hear about that. Let's go to the next room. That leads us to the living room slash office area. And this is another example of the odd layout of this apartment. It's completely open. And that's great if you have a lot of stuff to fill the room, but we don't and we didn't want to buy a bunch of stuff just to fill this space. There are some great bay windows behind me. Those also face east. So, you know, when the sun rises, it's great. But then after about 11, 12 o'clock, this unit's really not getting a whole lot of natural light, especially because we're not that high up off the ground. But being such a huge room, it served multiple purposes. Like I mentioned in the other room, we do eat most of our meals here on the couch. In front of the television, we have a couple of those TV tables that again, carried over from my last apartment. Over in the corner, we have a glass top desk. OG Gusto heads will remember that from my original tiny apartment tour here in Lincoln Park. These days, Narissa uses that desk. Sometimes she works here and sometimes she works on the couch with her laptop. Rowdy likes to sit here and help send emails and everything like that. There's also my 88 key Yamaha piano, which unfortunately lately, I haven't been able to practice as much as I would like to. And as a matter of fact, a few months ago, I canceled my lessons. I'm hoping to resume those in the coming months, but just YouTube and everything got so busy that I couldn't really make the time to work out, take care of Rowdy, do YouTube, and learn how to play the piano. Although I am pretty good if I do say so myself. Obviously we've got the television in this room. So we watch movies, we play the Nintendo Switch, we've got our modem, our router. We've got a few random things in here like some lights, a table, a humidifier because that is a must during the winter in Chicago. As a matter of fact, we have three humidifiers and I would argue that that still wasn't enough to keep our skin from getting dry. We do have a couple of area rugs in this room and something that y'all didn't see in the original apartment tour is this brand new bar cart. Nerissa's grandma picked this up for us. It's really beautiful. It's got two different shelves and we've got stuff on here like a bottle of Malort. Every Chicago household needs this. You never know when it's gonna come in handy, but it often does. This is not our first bottle. We also have some wine, some craft beer, and shout out to my sister for picking up these Chicago Cubs wine glasses. Really, really cool. Behind the bar cart, you might notice that we still have our Christmas stockings. Those have been up for a couple of years now, so there's no point in taking them down now. Over in this corner next to the television is Rowdy's dining room. We have both of his bowls here and a lot of his toys. We had to clean up this area because he loves to spread his toys everywhere in the apartment. Rowdy's going through this thing lately where he's really done with the basic kibble, so we kind of have to bribe him to eat his breakfast sometimes. But he does have both of his bowls here. I keep his water bowl freshly filled as much as possible because he is a thirsty dog. Besides the bedroom, this is the room where I spent the majority of my time in this apartment unit. Yes, even more than the kitchen and the living room. By default, we've kind of called this my office. It's not really an enclosed room, but it is a big space. Before we filmed this, I took a look at the original apartment tour that we made in this unit when it was still empty. And I had said in that video that this is probably where I was gonna put my desk and it actually was. I'm pretty sure that I plan on putting my desk right against this wall. And as you can see, this is an autonomous standing desk. I love this desk. Also the autonomous office chair. On top of that, I've got my iMac and I have a MacBook Pro. These have been my main tools in creating all the content that you see on my YouTube channel and stuff that you see on the website, social media, whatnot. On the wall, I wanted to decorate a little bit. So I've got my picture of Buckingham Fountain. Also, I have a couple of the recreations of the front page when the Gators won their two basketball NCAA championships. Behind me is my main closet. I've got most of my clothes in there. And then above that, a storage unit with some extra gym shoes, my movies, and then a couple of odds and ends, things like that. Also in this room, I've got my big Ikea bookcase. I had this in my tiny Lincoln Park apartment tour. And I've got all kinds of books on this shelf. Reading is a huge part of my lifestyle. And I do like books. I'm kind of old school in that way. I tried the Kindle thing. And I find when I read Kindle books, I don't really recall as much from the book. And sometimes I even forgot that I read that book. So just a little bit of a reminder, I've got everything from biographies on there. I've got like Muhammad Ali, Roberto Clemente, Richard Pryor, Leonardo da Vinci, Benjamin Franklin. I've got some cool books 
that are like artwork, you know, Picasso, Romero Brito. I've got Rick Steves travel guides on there. I've even got the Wu-Tang Clan book. Also, I use one of the shelves on the bookcase for my camera equipment, but I do have a set of Ikea shelves. That might be new too from the last apartment tour. One of the few things that we actually bought <laughs> to put in this unit after we did that original apartment tour. But I like to keep the majority of my equipment there and then on the shelf, I'll put lenses or the camera itself when we're not using it, just so it's quick access. But I don't like to have a lot of equipment. I've watched studio tours from other YouTubers and they've got like 50 lenses and five camera bodies and wires on wires on wires. And I just, that's not me. I'm good with just a little bit of equipment. I like to stay flexible like that. This is like the heart of the apartment right here in the sense that it's central and you can get to every other spot in the apartment from here. And this is the bedroom. This is where all the magic happens. And by magic, I mean practicing my card tricks, my Harry Houdini escape techniques, and making sweet, sweet love. Since the last time we did an apartment tour, we have a brand new set of Brook linen sheets, as well as a comforter and a couple of pillowcases. That has definitely livened up the bedroom a lot. The bedroom has the same hardwood flooring and the same high ceilings that you find throughout the rest of the apartment unit and as well, a lot of storage space. We have the AC and heating unit in one of the closets. The other closet is very big. That's where Narissa keeps the majority of her clothes and shoes. Although I do have a few jerseys in there. We have a ceiling fan. Above the closet is a huge storage area. And then in the bedroom itself, we've got four, yes, four Ikea dressers, two short and two tall. We've got a full-size dog crate, it's extra large. Roddy definitely doesn't need that much space, but it's got a nice memory foam mattress in there. That crate could probably fit a full-size English bulldog. Rowdy likes the space, although he may have to downsize when we move, which we'll talk about in a little bit. I also have an Ikea shelf for some gym shoes, you know, and just standard bedroom stuff. It probably is way too big for what we actually need in our current lifestyle. And there's one window, but there's no kind of view behind there. It just faces the next building. And in fact, they also have the dumpsters over there. So we hear people opening and closing those a lot. There's a beautiful painting above the bed that Narissa did, which is a recreation of one of my favorite Ralph Lauren polo designs. All in all, that's the bedroom, and we'll take you, tell you about the pros and cons of this unit, and whether we think the rent is worth it or not. All right, so I told y'all we would talk a little bit about the pros and cons of this apartment. First of all, one of the big pros is the neighborhood itself. Lincoln Park is a great place to be, specifically the section of Lincoln Park that we're in, close to Lake Michigan, central to a lot of public transit, including the red, brown, and purple lines, several different bus routes. We have everything we could ask for in this neighborhood from doctor's offices to grocery stores to great things to do and some pretty good restaurants. Although this is definitely not the spot you want to be in if you're a big time foodie. That might be West Loop, Wicker Park, Bucktown type of area. But you know, the food is good enough and we have a few go-tos in the area like Del Sol, like Kala, Colectivo Coffee when we really need you know, a coffee in a pinch. But yeah, the neighborhood is great. It's pretty quiet, pretty residential. Still too many cars and street parking for my liking, but that's a separate issue. Now the unit itself, it's been pretty good. Again, fairly quiet, a nice big space for us. We've had plenty of storage units. We've had lots of space to move around, especially during the pandemic. That was pretty important when we couldn't go anywhere else except our apartment. That was nice. So, you know, we, we had space. We could work, we could work out, we could cook, we could entertain ourselves. It, it's just been good in that sense. In case you are thinking about moving to Lincoln Park, rest assured we've got plenty of guides to this neighborhood from dining to the greatest things to do. And then on the channel, we also have like the best neighborhoods to eat and all of our favorites. So definitely check that out if you are moving to Chicago. Some of the other pros of the apartment, it looks like a old Chicago apartment. And for me, I've loved that. We've got exposed brick, we've got hardwood floors, bay windows, again, lots of open space. Although this unit has been renovated, it does retain some of that original architecture, like the brick wall, like the bay windows. And so that's been good. As far as the cons go, like I mentioned at the top of this video, this building has pretty much no modern amenities, no co-working space, no movie room, no gym, no rooftop deck. It's just 
pretty bare bones. And that's what you would expect for a building constructed in the late 19th century. Also, I did mention the hardwood floors, which we personally love, but Rowdy is not a fan. <laughs> It makes it very difficult for him to walk and run. And so we've put some carpets down here and there, but in general, he treats the hardwood floors like the space in between baseball bases. So he'll run from the carpet here, which is first base, to the carpet under my desk, which is second base. But in between, he's like <laughs> going crazy, thinking he's gonna get caught stealing. The space is just a little bit too much and the layout has been really wonky. Um, again, not the end of the world. Clearly, we liked it initially, and I wouldn't say that we hate it by this point. But one key thing is that since we moved in almost three years ago, our lifestyle has changed almost completely. When we came in here, the YouTube channel was still kind of getting off the ground. We were both still working from home every day, and it was great. We had the space we needed to grow into the people that we are today. Not to get too Hallmark Cardi on you, but your apartment needs to be a space that can facilitate your personal growth. And thankfully, this space has been just that for Narissa and myself, and I'm extremely grateful for that. Not only have we had the space to move around, do everything that we need that fits our lifestyle, cooking, working, taking care of Rowdy, tending to our plants and even watching movies here and there on the big screen. We can't watch Cubs and White Sox games because of the MLB's ridiculous blackout rules. But that's not an issue in New York, which we'll get to down the road. So there really aren't too many cons for this apartment. Our lifestyle has changed and we now realize that we don't need such a huge space. The bedroom, the kitchen, everything else, the storage units, that can all be downsized. Really for the past several months, I have been selling a lot of stuff on eBay. I've been donating things. That's probably some of the boxes that you noticed around the apartment. And yeah, it is lived in. So, you know, we did clean up for this apartment tour, but you know, it just it is what it is. Now, as to whether or not we think the $2,100 a month rent is worth it for this apartment, I would actually say no, it's no longer worth it for us. We were paying $2,000 a month and they decided that they wanted to raise the rent by $100 each month and that's when we said, you know what, we're spending so much time over in New York. Every single time we come back, we're like, why do we have this gigantic space with all this stuff around? And we don't even have that much stuff, which is crazy. So we've been downsizing, like I said, for the past several months, I've been donating things, selling other stuff on eBay, and we plan on getting a much smaller space here in Chicago, maybe like a studio apartment, or if the channel takes off sooner rather than later, we'll be buying that condo in the Tribune Tower. So keep it locked for all of that. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see y'all next time. Peace.